have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Today's topic, how to make money. It's everybody's favorite topic. Where do you start? How do you do it? I get that question too many times a day. And I have to always ask a question. I can't answer the answer without asking a question. The question that I ask, do you understand the business of business? That question, people can't seem to answer with a reasonable answer. And I can't say there's a right answer, but understanding the business of business, the business of people, the business of life, it's all relevant. I said, so tell me about some experiences that you've had, bad experiences with certain types of business. You know, and it always comes up. Well, I bought something online and the person didn't want to refund my money. And I have to get really, really angry and I get mad about it to get my money back. Okay, so how's your adventure going on eBay? Oh, these, these people always want their money back funny that you don't get it. You don't get the fact that you're not treating people like you want to be treated. Do you want people to treat you terribly? And that justifies you to treat people terribly. So what you want is the money. You want to treat people like you want to treat them. You want to be able to keep the money. And that's that. Welcome to Monday. Monday is my week in review. So Monday, when I get to work, I get all the reports pulled from the previous week. And it's nothing but doom and gloom. It's everything that went wrong. No matter what, I don't, I don't think I have had a Monday that didn't have hundreds of things that, that go wrong. But out of thousands of transactions, what are hundreds of things that go wrong? As I've said previously, most of it are annoyances. The annoyances can be corrected if everyone cared. If everyone cared, it's quite possible I'd be working for everyone instead of everyone working for me. How many people, out of how many people, what are those percentages of people that understand how to care about both sides of a transaction? A lot of what we experience is the emotional side of every transaction and why people expect that you can be mean or, or ignore or not respond to emails and questions and when people want to return something. And they get mad because somebody wants their money back. But yet, they got mad when they wanted their money back. Everyone, and I say everyone loosely, is just a term. As a collective whole, not every individual is suited to work for themselves. At some point, working for yourself is going to turn into others working for you. Now, it is possible that you could just work for yourself and never have any employees. 
and you would do just, you would do fine. You do just well, right? Typically, it ends up getting to be too much, too daunting. You can see that there's money to be made, and you just can't, you can't reach it. You can't touch it. You can see it out there because it requires more labor than one person could do. You, you trade a full-time job to work for yourself. And people don't understand that it requires three times the, the earnings when you're working for yourself. So whatever you're doing, for it to be a full-time income, support yourself, your family, whoever you're supporting, you need to make three times whatever you're currently making. So let's say you're making $500 a week. You're going to need to produce $1,500 a week. Clear money. You need $500 that you currently make to pay your current bills and support your lifestyle. You need $500 to grow. And you're going to need $500 to maintain your current inventory that's making you the original $500. Not everybody understands the chain of events, the business of business, all the things that it really takes, what it really takes for someone to produce $10,000 a month or $15,000 or $20,000. These are incredibly large numbers when a, a huge majority of the people live off of $2,000 a month. It's difficult to explain what it really looks like when someone goes from making $25,000 a year to making $50,000 a year to making $100,000 a year. And then once you get beyond a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year the numbers are staggering to do a hundred thousand dollars a year in sales and 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 operate at fifty percent profit and make fifty thousand dollars a year working for yourself out of your house it's it's very doable but understand that it's not easy and it's not easier than if you had a job paying you the same thing. So I always thought a job was the way you make money when you don't have any money for inventory. So if I couldn't, if I don't have anything to sell and I can't find anything to sell or I can't afford to buy anything, I have no money. I would go get a job because then a job allows me to make money without investing anything but time. As I've said before, my experience with jobs are very, very limited because a job is nothing more than, again, a way to make money without investing money other than time. That's what I look at a job. People out there will argue and go, well, it's a career. It's something that, that I'm going to move forward with for the rest of my life or some predetermined time frame, however long you're going to pursue said career. And it's always interesting because at what point can you look at a career and go, this investment has paid me in dividends. I've made a hundred more times money in this career path than I would have made working for myself. I've never heard anybody say that. That doesn't mean they don't say it. They, I've just never heard it. So back to my limited experience. I don't know what I'm talking about. Most of the time I don't know anything. But I did want to say thank you very much to Aaron for your wonderful, wonderful email. It inspires me that you're inspired. And if, to my friend, my chef, I'm glad that you see the craziness and you get to share it with me that we deal with out of our customers who we dearly love.
And we love our customers very much. And until people can understand that our customers are people, and those people have higher expectations of their product purchases than we do of the product we're selling. I can make all the videos in the world trying to explain to people that when you're out being the purchaser, you have a very high expectation of your product. But it's funny how as the seller, you don't have the same expectation of the product you're selling. Can't make people understand what a difference it is and the problems it will cause. But remember those problems? They're just annoyances. Because real problems are something that a lot of us are never faced with. I'm faced with a few problems. And I share them occasionally back within the last 80 or so videos. There are problems. And they are real. And my heart breaks for the people who have the real problems. I have a subscriber who is, due to his health situation, he's confined to his house. That is a real problem. And through all the advice that I could possibly give, I have no advice. I cannot understand. I can't even pretend to be empathetic to what he must go through. And I can't imagine it. I have no clue what he feels like. But lucky for him, there are still a lot of ways to work and make a little bit of money without ever leaving your house. It is possible. And to you, my hat's off, sir. And to all of you who struggle with the real struggles and you take the time to watch the videos that all the people make. And I gotta tell you, it saddens me greatly over the misguided information that a lot of these YouTubers and people that make videos, not even on YouTube, just all of them. It doesn't matter whether it's on Facebook or Vines or I don't even know all the places that people make videos or all the blogs and articles, articles written by people on theory about how to make money and how to live life when they actually have no idea what it's like to live on that dirt road in that single wide mobile home and not know where the next meal is coming from. They don't know. To them, I, there are no words to express how I really feel about all their garbage that they spew. They don't know. And I've been there and I've lived it and I lived it for what seems like a lifetime. And I myself, have a problem that I cannot overcome. And it is truly a problem. It's not just an annoyance. Because I spent so long without a car and I couldn't afford a car. I have a habitual habit that I cannot break of. I always have at least two cars just for me. Because I promised myself so long ago that one day when I'm able, I will never, ever, ever be without a car. So I always have two cars. Nobody drives the other car, just me. And when I could afford to have two houses, I would never, ever not have a place to live. I will always have a place to live and I'm always going to have a car. And no one can ever take that from me. Because once you buy that house and you own it, and no one can ever take it, it's different. And I can't express to you how different it is to be in that position. And it's not an amazing house. It's a very small 983 square foot, two bedroom, one bathroom. It's just a little house. But I bought it because if anything ever happened, and I say anything because I could simply, I could get into a car accident, looking at the camera as people point out to me. 
I could trip over a curbstone and hit my head and not be functional any longer, not be able to work, not be able to make any clear decisions or choices. And I don't have anybody that works for me that could fill my shoes. I don't have four people that could make any of the clear choices that I make. What would I do? My house, my extra house, may not be as big as the house that I live in. And my kids probably wouldn't be very happy. We'd all have to share a few rooms. But we wouldn't be in the street. As many times as I say, I cannot, I cannot convince people enough on making good choices, making clear decisions, understanding what you're trying to achieve, and seeing a clear path because not everyone can see the clear path, the road that it's going to take. And it's a very long journey. People, people want to be able to buy something today and sell it tomorrow and have tens of thousands of dollars and it changed their life. I've just never seen that. I drive through a neighborhood every day when I go, go home of people that I'm not really sure they understand how they got where they are. I know how I got where I am, and I know how long it took. You have to know where you've been to know where you're going. I'm Dave. This was the Afternoon Drive. I'll see you soon.